As we go through our life, we travel down a windy and <laughs> curvy and up and down and sideways and all these different things. The road and the path that we are on many times is crazy. Sometimes we're climbing a mountain. Sometimes we're running through the desert. Sometimes our life is full of peace. Sometimes it's full of trauma and despair. As we go through life, the road that we travel is our own. It is a path that is set before us, not just of our own choosing, but also a path that God has, ha has set before us. We're going to look at a passage of scripture today. In Matthew, Matthew 10, verses 5 through 15, where Jesus is talking to his disciples and, he, and he's picked out his disciples and, and he's telling them what he wants them to do with their life. And we can apply this passage to ourselves here too, because I think it's very important that as we travel the road that we are on, wherever it may take us, there is a pattern in this passage that we can apply to our life, that we can live full of love and grace and mercy and the blessings of Christ. My message today is entitled, The Road We Travel. Because through the ups and the downs and all the stuff that hits our lives, if we do it for the right reason, If we do it to care for others, to, to, to inspire, to lift up those around us, we can live a life full of peace and grace and mercy and all the wonderful things that God has for us, even in the hardest of times, even when the road is straight up and we're hanging off a cliff. For those of you who are here today in Inspire Church, thank you for joining us. Our message is here on the board, our passage. Inspire Church family, watching online, wherever you are in the world, whenever you're watching this, thank you for being a part of, of this ministry. Continue to pray for us, support us, love us. I'm here to pray for you. Leave a message or comment. Thank you for joining us at this message. The road we travel is our passage for today. I'm going to go through this a little bit by little bit. And I pray that God speaks to you as he did to me this week, as I was thinking and contemplating on this message. Matthew 5 verses 5 through I mean Matthew 10 verses 5 through 6 reads and the 12 these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying go not do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel you see the path that we are on, the, the, the area that we are to go is unique to each of us. Now, Jesus is sending out his 12 disciples out in, into the land. And it says, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not go into the city of the Samaritans. So Jesus is giving them pretty detailed and specific area of what they are to do with their ministry in the beginning. And you see, this is the earliest Christian ministries. And God is telling them, listen, we, we, we got, we're going to focus here and we're going to focus here. Later, we can go into all the world and all of these different things. So sometimes in our lives, my walk and the people that are, I interact with each day are very different than the people that you interact with each day. I don't know the same people as you. Maybe we do. Maybe we're brother and sister. But there are still people in our lives. Your mission is not my mission. The people you come in contact with are not the same people I do. So as we go down this road that we travel, as we walk with our God, I pray you know God. If you don't, we can make sure we can take care of that here. You just got to say, Jesus, come into my heart. But as we go through this, this journey that we are on, and we have a unique group of people that we are to touch and that will come our way. The word of God says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So 
They had a different time, but it is the same mission. The mission is to go. The mission is the journey that we are on. The mission is to share, to care, to love, to bless. The passage continues. We're looking at Matthew 10. We're now looking at verses 7 and 8. It says, and go and preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So in this passage, Jesus, these are the words of Christ. He's talking to his disciples. He's called them up and he's saying, listen, everybody, this is what we got to do. You see, <clears throat> I'm here today because I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a disciple. You're here today, I pray, because you're a follower of Christ. You're a disciple. You have a relationship with God. So once <laughs> Christ is saying, as you go, so as you go down the road of your life, wherever it may lead you, wherever it may go, sometimes we don't all have the call to preach. We don't all have the call to children's ministry. We don't all have the call to evangelism or this or that. Sometimes, you know, we work and we take care of our families and we take care of ourselves and people come into our lives. And that is all a mission and all part of the journey that we are on. So as you go, wherever that may be, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus loves you. He has shared his love with us. He has shared his love with me. So the people that I encounter, the people that you encounter, those who come across your path, you gotta let them know the love. You got to let them know the care, the things that are going on in your life. You got to let them know. You got to let them know. You got to preach. Now, you might not be hitting them over the head with the Bible and doing all this and doing all that. But we all have our own unique way of sharing the love that Christ gave us. Of sharing the inner passion and the compassion that, that, that Jesus showed upon a cross. We can let people know that Easter is more than a basket. It's more than skipping church in order to get to the, buf to the buffet first. It is more important than the, 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 the egg hunt after service. Yes, I love those things. And we're going to have an egg hunt here at the church after service for the little ones. It's a way to get people together and socializing. And, and, and sometimes it's the only time people come to church and hear the word of God. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. So as I go through life, I'm going to let people know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it says to heal the sick and cleanse lepers and raise the dead and cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. I see so many people of faith, people with, with a relationship with Christ, people who, who, who are strong in their walk with Jesus, who do not take advantage of the authority Christ gives us. We don't walk in our spiritual gifts. We don't cast out the devil out of our families. We don't, we, we, we don't take authority over our homes. We don't, we don't believe that Christ can really heal. We don't, all of these things in our lives. You know, God has given the, the, the believer so much power. And if we walked into just a portion of it, we could change our families' lives. We could change the people around us. You know, this is not just God saying something. If you believe the word of God, God says right here, Jesus says, it says, heal the sick, cleanse, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Ladies and gentlemen, not all these things will occur in your life. 
But you have to believe that with the power of God coming through us, these things are possible as we go down the road of our life. So when a situation arises and we're scared to tackle something because of our little faith, we have to remember this passage once in a while. And we got to say, God has given us authority over the dark side of our lives, over the devil, over these sicknesses. Now, do our loved ones always get healed? No. Do we always get healed? No. But I believe and I know that it is possible. Because I believe and I know that everything is possible through my God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we can't pick and choose what we believe out of the word of God. We've got to stand firm on it. So if God says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, then I'm ready to do it should the need arise. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we got to be ready for these things. And it says, for we have freely received, now we got to give freely. That's right, Joseph. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, we receive the love of Jesus as unworthy as we are, as terrible of human beings as we can be. Jesus laid his life down for us at no cost. So why should I charge somebody for my prayers? So why should I not go to that part of town because it's dirty and I'm scared? If God says that's where my journey shall take me, then that's where my journey shall go. The road we travel is not a light one. The road we travel many times is burdensome and it's hard and it's full of doubt and sorrow and sickness, but it can also be glorious and wonderful and, and full of amazing things and amazing places that we go. You see, ladies and gentlemen, my message today is entitled, The Road We Travel. Where's yours going? It's probably going somewhere else than mine. So hallelujah, are you holding on to the right or are you dragging your heels? passage continues. We're looking at Matthew 10. We're looking at verses 9 and 10 right now. And it says, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor a bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staves, for a worker is worthy of his food. You see, ladies and gentlemen, in this passage, Jesus has chosen his disciples and he's sending them out. I'm a disciple. You're a disciple. We're here today. Jesus is sending us out. And he's given us some instructions. So we already know that our journeys are going to be different for each of us. We are different people. We know different people. And who are we going to come in contact with? Our different people. Jesus has given us authority to cast out demons, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. And he says, hey, you've freely taken this, this life, this salvation from us so now you got to freely give it now Jesus is telling us how we should walk this journey he's saying provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts basically what he's saying to the disciples to us is we really need to trust God for our provision. Society says, don't trust no one. Fight, steal, kick, grind, beat up, whatever it is, so your pockets are fat, so you can have the best car, so you can have the finest shoes, so you can have the fanciest church, so you can have this, so you can have that. God is saying, your pocket's empty. You got anything in there? If you do, I want you to empty them. Because I want your reliance to be on me. I want you to know that the journey that you're on, now this doesn't, as we all know, it's not 
literal, literal. We live in a society where you gotta pay bills, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. We gotta make a living. The inspired church has to buy outreach things and pay our rent, you know, and all the different things. You know, we, let's be rational here. You, you can't just throw up your hands and say, I ain't paying rent no more. You'll be out on the street, ladies and gentlemen. So is our reliance really on God? Is our peace of mind in the hands of Christ? Is our trust, is our joy that of the world? Or is it found in those moments where we see a change to life? Where we see our young children growing up to be something special? Where we see our co-workers coming to us for prayer. Is that the joy or is it hitting the clubs? Is it hitting the bars? Is it doing this or doing that? And, you know, what is it? What is our... The word of God says, provide neither gold nor silver, no copper in your money belts, nor bag, nor, uh, nor bag for your journey, nor tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. He says... Don't even carry a bag. Don't even take a coat. Don't even wear sandals. Don't have a staff. You know, they're walking all over the place out there. They're going up and down mountains. It's crazy. And he's saying, for a worker is worthy of his food, for of his food. You see, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we gotta travel light. Sometimes we gotta be prepared to move. I know me, I, I don't really care for change. Every time we move this church, it's about six times now. It freaks me out for months. I'm finally getting used to this evening service. <laughs> How long will we be in evening church? I don't know. That's in the hands of God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we drag our heels. Sometimes we, uh, some people, you know, they don't want to travel light. They want to bring a whole bunch of stuff with them. Jesus is saying, on the road that we're traveling together, ladies and gentlemen, you got to rely on me. Now imagine the disciples. When they're sitting there, Jesus is saying, man, you can't bring no coin. That means you can't stop and get it. You can't buy nothing. You can't even bring a coat to keep you warm at night. I want you to take the shoes off your feet and walk barefooted. You see what Jesus did and what the disciples began to learn. And I've seen it with my own eyes, with my father and, and, and the way we traveled around the world in my younger life. It was that Jesus provided shoes. Jesus provided meals. God provided a place for them to sleep. God opened doors. God will take care of us. It might not be what we would like it to be. We might not be staying at the Hilton, but maybe we're staying at the Motel 6. It is somewhere to lay your head. It is somewhere to go. Are you ready for that kind of journey in your life? Are you open to that as a follower of Christ? Should that be where he leads us? You see, sometimes we got to ask ourselves, how dedicated are we? We're looking at the word of Christ here, the red words, Jesus' own words, Matthew 10. Verses 11 through 14, it says, Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is it, who is it worthy, and where, and stay there until you go out. And when you go into the household, greet it. And if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. We're all on our own paths. We're all on a journey with Christ. We're all on a journey of our lives for however long it may last. And Jesus says, whatever town or city you enter and who is in it is worthy, stay there until you go out. So God is planning on us to travel. God is planning on people to come into our lives and move around us. And he's not expecting us to stay, to, to, to be so focused on 
one individual. God wants us to move around as best we can, and we got to be open to that. And if the place is open, and the place is worthy, then we sit there, and we love on people, and we care on people, and we give them the best we can, and, and, and we preach, and we share the love of Christ with them. And when you go into a household, greet it. So we, when God opens opportunities for us to bless someone, to, to get somebody new into our lives, and, and believe me, I'm, I'm a very closed off person. I'm, I'm actually very, very shy. God's done a lot of work on me to open me up. I had to kick down a lot of walls or, or God had to break down a lot of walls. I don't mind sitting in the house and not seeing the soul all day long sometimes. I think a lot of us can raise our hand to that. And so God did a lot of work on me. And he, you know, he, he took someone who's an introvert and who really didn't like people that much. I had a few friends in my family and he puts me in a ministry where I got to love people. He had to change my heart, which he did. He had to open up my mind. That I, it's better to have people in my life and pray for people and put out into people's lives than it is to trap, to, than it is to, to be so self-focused in my life. He says, and if your household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. Have you ever been in this situation, in this journey that is your life? Or maybe it was a job, maybe it was a relationship, maybe it was at school, and you were blessing people. You, you, you're trying to make friends. You, you, you're looking after people. Maybe it was a church, you know? Not everybody in church is the nicest. People go to church because they messed up. For the most part, they're trying to fix something that's broke. Let's be real. It's the truth. And it wasn't right. And you gave, and you gave, and you gave. Maybe you're stabbed in the back. Maybe they start talking about you. Maybe they do this, maybe this. Not everything in life works out the way we want it to. Not everything in life is, is exactly how we want it to work out. And Jesus knows that. He knows us human beings. We can get hurt. And we're sensitive. Sometimes God wants us to learn from the situations that we're placed in. And it says that when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, then depart from that house or city and shake the dust from your feet. Sometimes in life, it's time to move on. Sometimes in life, we give and we give and we give. And we've done all that we can. Maybe God has somebody else to slide into that position. Maybe God has been teaching us through the situation that we've been in. Sometimes we hold on to hurt and, and sorrow so much that we're weighed down. But Christ says you got to shake off the dust. Why? Because he needs us mobile. He needs us to travel light. He needs us on our feet. Sometimes, you know, when you walk through a construction site or something like that on a muddy day, man, you get giant clumps of mud on the, on the bottom of your feet. And it's hard to walk. It's hard to move. Sometimes you got to clean off your feet, clean off the baggage that's been holding you back. You got to shake off the dust, ladies and gentlemen, because God has a plan. We're on a journey. We're on a walk with God. We're supposed to be blessing and loving and caring. And maybe the place that we're at right now isn't meant for us to be there for long. And a tough choice must be made. And Christ says, don't worry. It's all good. Shake off the dust. It's all right. You see, the road that we're traveling is a long and windy road. So we go around. Wherever it may be, 
And we walk into the town or situation or place and we greet them. We say, hey, I'm Joe. How you doing? Let me be your friend. I, I got some good news. The kingdom of, of the Lord is at hand. Or a roundabout ways of saying that. We share who we are. The passage, the, the path that we're on, you know, and we get into their lives. And maybe it's great. Maybe things are working out. Maybe stuff is going well and we stay there for a while. Maybe things are changed. Maybe situations change, or maybe we change it, and we feel the need to move on. It's not the same situation that it used to be. And the peace that you had for a time returns to you. You just know it ain't right no more. So instead, of staying in a horrible situation, we realize, you know, God still has a plan for me. There are things that God wants me to do. There are people that God wants me to love. So that little portion of my life, I'm shaking off the dust. I'm moving on. Maybe it's a forgiveness thing. Maybe it's, it's a sin thing, something that's hindering your walk with Christ. Maybe it is an individual. It could be many different things on this journey that we're on. Where we got to shake it off and we got to move on and we got to put some stuff behind us. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at a passage of scripture here that is discussing how do we go through our life. Matthew chapter 10, verse 15 reads Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. You see, God knows when someone does us wrong. God knows when we're putting all of our effort into a situation and we've been badly treated or whatever it may be. God knew that the disciples were in for it. Jesus knew that they were going to face some issues along this journey of their life, sharing God with others. God, Jesus knows that on this journey that we're on, we're gonna face hardships. And people are gonna laugh at us and call us stupid and not think that we're right when we put our faith in God and we walk as best we can and we reach out to people. They're going to say, you need to focus on your job more. You need to get a bigger house. You need to do this. You need to grow that. And you, you, you're thinking to yourself, well, I got peace where I am because this is where God's helped me. And I'm blessing people and I'm loving people. And the word of God says, assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. That town was destroyed. Wiped off the face of the earth. It'll be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. When people do you wrong because you're doing what is right by the word of God, God bless their souls. And we're not one to be the judge of that. Let me get that clear. But Jesus knows. He knows our hearts, ladies and gentlemen, and he knows the path that we're on. He, he preordained this walk that we're on. So enjoy it as best you can. You're going to fight. It's going to be uphill battle. But some days you're going to sit around, and even though there's all kinds of chaos and stuff going on, you're still going to have a peace. And you're still going to think clearly. Even though you don't know why you have a peace. You don't know why you're thinking clearly. But then you remember, I'm on this journey with God. And you fall on your knees and you cry out to the Father. Or maybe you sing and you dance and you shout hallelujah. 
See, ladies and gentlemen, the road we travel is one unique to ourselves. You might be sitting right by your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your mother or father, whatever it is, but it doesn't matter who's in your family. You're still unique. And God has a specific calling for each individual. Because you're different and God needs us all to come on this journey. And as we go through life. And we cry and we shout and we get angry. And we praise and we love and, and we jump up and down. Just remember... That Jesus knows the path that we're on and will not let us stray out of his control and out of his hand. So find assurance today as you go down the journey and the path that you're on that Jesus is placing your footsteps and is ironing out the issues that are around us and bringing peace even in the most difficult of times. Ladies and gentlemen, as you go through life, do it with God. Do it with Jesus. And be at peace. Dear Lord, I come before you today and I thank you for this day. I thank you that you're with us and that you care for us and that Lord, as we go through this journey and what may be going on in our lives, Lord, I, I just give you praise, honor, and glory. And Lord, we just thank you for your, your touch and Lord, your healing in our spiritual bodies and in, in our minds, but also in our physical bodies, Lord. We, we know that you're a healer of all things and that you can do anything. And Lord, you can heal our broken hearts and our emotions. And I just feel a big call for the healing touch of Christ right now. In ourselves and in our families and those around us. So God, we give this moment to you. And if you don't know Jesus and you need this peace that, that I've been talking about, just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make my home in heaven with you. I give you all that I am. So God, I pray a special blessing today that this journey that we are on it be a journey that glorifies you and brings peace to our souls. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you for letting me share with you today.